Hi everybody, my name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food. Alright, so you've decided you're going to do something about your weight for sure, for real, this time, underlined, 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 or your health, or both. This time you really, really mean it. You've had enough of the the wah wah in your ear from doctors, specialists, nurses, lab workers that have said, you know, you might want to look at. And um, they might have put that prescription in your hand and you're looking down at it and you said, is this my moment to do something finally about my health and my weight? Well, there's a lot of processing you probably have to do before you get that prescription filled if that's going to be the easier softer way but do you really want the easier softer way don't you want to arrest something before it's too late and before you become a bona fide person with diabetes or heart issues or um, other things that can go wrong asthma allergies um, or weight you know weight complicating things making you have joint issues, um, permanent joint issues, making it hard to walk. How am I supposed to lose weight if I can't walk? But we know that food is 80% and exercise is 20. So just changing up your diet might make things a little bit easier for you. And I've always felt that there's, you know, a lot of processing before we get to the finally, this time, not kidding, no joke, I really mean it. Um, I know that we've, you know, in my own journey I've made um, empty promises to myself, those moments of stepping on the scale and being so totally, totally, totally disgusted. But by evening, it's gone again, and then out comes the friendlies and the frozen M&Ms and the frozen Reese's Pieces or Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and out comes the Mrs. Richardson caramel topping. And once again, I numb myself to my reality because that's the human nature. You know, we do really well with our food plans and eating healthy until we enter into it, right? It's the human factor. <laughs> That's what we are. So three of the things, and think, thinking of it as like four A's, the A, the, the A that stands alone over here is the arresting of it. But the three things that go into really making those changes that, that take time to build it's not overnight. It's not by Monday. It's not by the reunion. It's not by the prom. It's not by the family reunion. It's not by the wedding. It's not by the time you need to fit into that dress that you bought because six months ago you started a program and you were going to be fitting into it because you knew this day was coming up and it was 40% off and it doesn't fit and the day's coming and you don't really want to spend another, you know, three, three figure item on a dress to wear to a wedding when you plan on being three sizes less. You, you know what I'm saying, right? Ugh, that cycle. So the process that I'm talking about here today is making yourself available for it. Okay, I'm disgusted enough. I'm grossed out enough. I'm repulsed enough. I'm self-loathing enough that this time I'm going to be available to this. I am going to open my world and become available not just today but just for today and if you keep it in the day sometimes it's a whole lot easier to think of rather than doing it for the rest of my life I can't have grains or sugar that's that's daunting I don't even want to think that way just for today I might have to alter what I'm doing thinking breathing eating and be available available to this change this gift if you're watching this, you already have a clue that probably change is something that might be coming down. And so making yourself available, truly available, and not just the disgust of a bad night of food the next day. The next thing is that you need to make it, you need to make yourself affordable to it. You need to know that there is cost involved in making these changes. What are some of the costs, you say? Well, there's emotional cost, and then there's financial cost, and um, you have to do some work around it. You have to clean out your pantry. Eat. Um, I don't think Doritos are on any short list of any food plan. I don't think that um, 
some of the chemicals and some of the foods are something that you want to stick with long term, right? Stuff in your freezer, stuff in your fridge, stuff in your pantry. So there is some, there is some affording a food plan change. But, you know, I have, I do a low carb, high fat keto plan and, and it is affordable. It's funny how you eat less of the good stuff because it's so high quality, high quality and it's so satisfying. My satiety button is just purring by the time I'm done with a small meal that is so rich in fats. I love my fats. And I also get plenty of vegetables, a little bit of fruit, and um, some animal protein. But mostly it's about adding the fats to my bulletproof coffee or my vegetables. That really is where um, most of my fat intake comes from. The other thing is accepting that this is what I'm going to be doing for now in order to arrest these um, metabolic things that are happening to my body because I'm not 20 anymore, I'm not 30 anymore, I might not be 40 anymore and accepting, you know, these old gray hags that talk here like me and others, we have some experience of our own that we share on a regular basis along with the doctors that are graying at the temples too. And, and we know from our own experience of testing. Testing and thinking I'm special. Testing and thinking that I can get away with what I had back then because I can. Thinking that, you know, that, that habit of like, I always buy this, I always have this. And, and not really thinking, is this good for the long term? Are the metabolic things that are happening to my body reversible? You know, as I hold this prescription for something in my hand from the doctor, because he's realizing that um, I'm not listening to him, that I haven't listened to him, that in the 10, 15 years I've been going to him, there's been a solid two to five pound gain each year. And suddenly here I am pushing the 200s and he's, he's I can't do anything for you because you're not doing anything for yourself. There is a point where we have to be available for the change, willing to afford the change, and willing ex to accept the change to get to that place of arresting further damage to our bodies. And that's just for the health part. Think about the scale, you know, and giving our bodies a chance. If you're trying a new food program, a new fo food plan, and you give it a week or two and your body is like just it doesn't seem to be responding trust the process especially if it's a if it's a real serious keto program so many people have an immediate weight loss and then they struggle and the weight comes back but their pants are fitting better things are changing but the scales not dropping and we are so ruled by that little 10 by 10 inch LED thing. It just rules our life. If you had a good way in in the morning, a good naked way in in the morning, you feel great. You go to the doctor's office like I did yesterday. I weighed 10 pounds more. Why wouldn't I? I'd already had, you know, 50 ounces of water. I had on clothes. It's later in the day. Uh, yeah, of course I'm going to weigh more. I don't even pay attention to what the doctor's office says because I know that my naked weigh-in is what I go by, my scale, and it may be 10 pounds off, but it's consistent. I'm still standing on the same scale, and, and I know that feeling of getting a new scale because I want it to read different, right? Any of you ever do that? Well, I got the Weight Watchers scale, and it read seven pounds difference. I brought it into work, and one by one, the clients would dare to stand on it. They said, yeah, seven pounds off. Yeah, it's seven pounds off, pounds off. And so it's like, okay, I donated it to that agency. I didn't want that anymore, so I went back to the good old one. You know, I don't know if it's accurate. I don't really care. It's accurate for me day, day by day that I weigh myself. So ask yourselves these questions. If you want to be arresting what could be a very slow-moving train with your body and symptoms that could lead you to life, lifelong chronic illnesses and diseases, are you willing to be available for change? Like really showing up, not caving to the whim of Halloween candy, 
Christmas cookies made early, um, new types of breads, new types of um, cereals, you know, different things that, that could harm you or, you know, more, um, more artificial um, sweeteners, you know, switching from classic Coke to Diet Coke or switching from yogurt filled with um, real sugar to um, artificial, artificially sweetened sugars. Are you willing to really make the change? Are you available for the change and not just waiting until you work through the items that you have? I've been there and I've done that. And that's really the fear of diving in. That's not really being available. I've done that. Of course I've done that. But, you know, how many times have I bought something keto-ish and it was gross or disgusting and I threw it out like those paleo bars. Oh my gosh. No, $60 I spent. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes there's a cost of being stupid and rather than believing <laughs> the reviews, I said, submit order. Not for one box, but two. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. So it, it cost me $60 for being stupid. So are you willing to be available? And that means ignoring what you've got left in your freezer, your pantry, your fridge, and making yourself available for a food plan change. Are you willing to afford a little bit of a setup fee to get you from one plan to the next? Yes, there's a cost. That's the way it goes. I mean, there's copays for meds too, if that's the easier, softer way, but you don't wanna go that way really, do you? And then number three, are you accepting that this, this could be a way of eating change that's gonna last you for your life? A lifestyle change. Are you willing to do those three things, look at those three things, process those three things to arrest what's going on in your body? Whether or not you're accepting, your metabolic issues could be getting a wee bit worse every single day, month, week, year. And so there's only one way to stop it, and that's to stop it. Arrest it. Look at being available. Look at, at the affordability of making a change. If you've been spending a lot of money on your standard American diet, think of Kerrygold, butter, coconut oil, real avocados, good vegetables, hopefully organic, grass-fed, grass-fed or organic meats that like three to four ounces are going to be satisfying because you're buying the fattier cuts. Fat is very, very satisfying. Oils are very, very satisfying. Treat your animal protein like a, a complement, as Dr. Hyman says. So look at those three things, available, affording, and accepting to arrest things and make changes in your life. Don't be dictated by the scale. Don't be swayed by what, 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 bleh, 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 by what works for somebody else. It might not work for you. Get to know your body and what you can have to eat and stop messing around with other people's successes or getting all jealous about them or envious and thinking, well, they did it, I'm gonna do it just for a month, just until I lose that 10, just until Thanksgiving. You know, be good to yourself. Stop messing around with fake foods, okay? This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.